Hey you, welcome to my channel. My name is Jeff Dix, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the Otter Vortex Pro Cabin. So I drove all the way to Ottawa from Kingston the other day just to buy this and some other stuff that we'll talk about in another video. But I really needed a new hut. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've been using a Fraybill HQ100, and while that hut was great, and it worked, and it got me out onto the ice and out of the wind, and I was able to heat it reasonably well, it was time for an upgrade. I needed something bigger, I needed something insulated, and just overall better. So the choice was between the Otter Vortex Pro Cabin and the Otter Vortex Pro Lodge. And the reason I went with the cabin is because of its size. I'd love to have the lodge, but it's big, it's heavy, and truthfully, I don't even know if it would fit in the box of my truck. Uh, this box here, almost went from all the way to the front to all the way to the back. I've only got a five and a half foot box on my truck and the Vortex Lodge was actually longer than that. So I might've had to put it in on a diagonal, which means that anything else that I needed to put in the bed of my truck might not fit very well. The other thing was the weight because I don't have a sled or a quad or a bike or anything like that. So I'm still pulling all my stuff out by hand. So that extra weight of the lodge doesn't seem like much, but it really would make a big difference when you're pulling your sled. Especially because I had to buy a bigger sled just so that I could take this out, let alone something that's, you know, 25 square feet bigger. But anyways, let's get into the unboxing of this and I'm gonna take it out, have a look at it, and then we're gonna set it up and see what it looks like inside. All right, so let's pop this puppy open. What's the best way to do this, I wonder? So this is it in the bag and whatever this is. We'll, we'll get to that after. Let's take this thing out. I like how the bag is oversized. Material feels good. Hi, Abby. The bag feels like it's the same material as the one that came with my Fraybill. I've got, I like these uh, buckles here that make the bag a little bit tighter. These are just some, uh, Looks like just some straps to make it easier to hold. Let's open it up. Nice big oversized bag. That's really nice. All right. We've got here all the anchors, I think. Yes. Night, holy cow. Okay, so we've got our little ID plate if you need that uh, wherever you're fishing. Some places you need to have it out all the time. Some places you only need it out uh, during specific times or if you're gonna leave your, uh, your hut out on the ice. But I'll tell you what, I like these ice spikes, these anchors for the tent. These are really big, heavy duty ice spikes. And uh, I didn't know that it was a thing to have heavy duty compared to the regular ones, but these ones are a lot more sturdy. And you know what, it makes sense because a couple of the ones that came with my Fraybill uh, Model 1, actually bent the spikes somehow. I don't know how, but some of them are, are bent a little bit. So that's really cool. I think it's gonna take a lot of force to bend these guys. And uh, we'll see how easy these go into the ice compared to the ones that came with my fibro. I will say that this bag is pretty handy to have, that it's not like attached to the, uh, to the tent bag. You can just take this out. It's pretty good. I think I know what these are for. actually seem a whole lot bigger than my Fraybill when it's compacted like this. We've got this one nice heavy tension strap that uh, looks like it just comes right off. It's not actually attached to the tent. So I'm going to be doing a lot of comparing to my Fraybill tent because it's the only one that I've personally ever used, so it's the only one, other one I have experience with. And I can tell you, the Fraybill HQ100 came with a tension strap as well, but it was attached to the tent on the inside. So like when you folded it up and had it like this, you had to root around inside of the flaps to try and find those yellow straps to pull them out, and then you could ratchet around and, and, and tension them down to make it easier to pack the thing into the bag. This is really nice because this just comes out and then you can store that right in the bag. So you don't have to mess around. Once you get this tent all folded up and ready to packed up to go, you can just 
take this strap out. You don't have to root around inside of the tent to try and find the straps that are attached. And uh, it just makes it a lot easier. So that's a really nice quality of life uh, aspect from Otter. Let's go open the tent. And suddenly now we're in my backyard. But let's get this thing popped open and have a look at it. Anchor bag. And I believe that these are the extra posts for the door, which we'll see in just a few minutes. So uh, let's see how long it can take me to figure this out. I've never set this tent up before. I have no idea how, like if, if there's any tips or tricks or whatever to do it. I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. Otter Vortex Pro cabin. That was pretty easy to set up. For somebody like me who has never set up a tent like this or this one even in particular, pretty easy. But there's one part left and that's the door poles, I think. So let's uh, try and figure that out. Of course, this door right here is one of the main selling points of the Vortex Pro versus the regular Vortex, the older models, that just had the triangle doors. Now this one, I think, has a triangle door somewhere. Maybe not. Maybe it's just the one door. Anyways, let's get in here and see. All right, so these are the poles, I'm pretty sure, that go around the door to kind of stabilize this and just make it a little more sturdy. And I would be right. Okay. My guess is this one goes in the top because it's short. Truthfully, I can see this being a little bit of a pain in the butt to do every time. But, I mean, you might not have to do it every time. Maybe if it's like super windy or something, you might want to do that just to give the tent some rigidity. But if it's just like a day like it is today, not too much wind. Maybe, maybe I won't bother too much with this one. It just goes up in these little orange tabs here. Uh, this one is not long enough. Maybe that one goes on this side. Okay, this pole is not long enough. Otter. And this one is also not long enough. Maybe I... Maybe it's supposed to be, maybe this is supposed to be pushed out a little bit more. Let's see. Maybe there's a, maybe I don't have the edges all uh, pushed out to where they're supposed to be. Okay. So, I mean, that's something. Okay, well, maybe there's something I'm missing here. We will revisit that. Okay, so I don't know what's going on with these door poles, but I might have to reach out to Otter on that one. Either way, I'm not too like uh, shaken up about that. I've heard really good things about Otter customer service and it's entirely possible that I'm just doing it wrong. So I'll have to figure that out another time. But until then, let's talk about some of the stuff in here that I'm seeing. Abby. Like almost all pop-up shelters should have, we've got a vent. We've got one here and we've got one right here. And of course that is for safety when you're running your heater. It lets fresh air in and it lets the carbon monoxide that builds up in here escape from the tent so that you're not in any danger. But one of the things that I like, obviously, is that this is an insulated tent. And you can see this nice like uh, stitching here, the quilting. I like the gray interior. I think it's gonna look a lot nicer for like filming and stuff. My old tent was all black. So if the light even got a little bit low, sometimes the tent would get like a little bit grainy. And it, the black just seemed to absorb all the light that I had inside the tent. And hopefully this is going to help me keep things a little bit more illuminated when I'm filming, especially in low light. Let's carry on. So the poles are feel nice and rigid. It's, I don't know if they're the carbon fiber like most other uh, ones. 
I remember reading something about how they're made of a different material, but uh, I could be wrong on that. One of the things that I see in this tent that a lot of people have complained about with Otter products is these little threads that hang down. For some reason, that, that really upsets people. And to be quite honest with you, like that doesn't bother me at all. I don't know why this is so frustrating for people. If you really don't like it, just take a lighter and, and burn those threads. You don't want to pull them out or cut them. You want to just burn them. We'll take a lighter and just, just singe those things right up. And then you don't have to worry about it. But uh, I am seeing a little bit of that around the tent. But like I said, it just doesn't bother me. Anyways, we've got all these nice windows here that uh, I really, really like. So we've got one side window here. This is for like when you're sitting down and you're trying to see your tip ups and stuff. This uh, plastic is super clear. It's not like the plastic that was in my other tent. I don't know what it was. Like it was, it was clear. You could see through it, but it was just like cloudy almost a little bit. You know what I mean? And of course we've got the Velcros to keep it closed and the Velcros here that let you open it. These are pretty much standard features and almost all otter tents from what I've seen of videos. There's just been none of this particular model. So this one doesn't, uh, this one doesn't have any Velcro on the bottoms to keep it down, but obviously you don't really need it. You just let that hang. And that's pretty much good like that. That's not getting in anybody's way or anything like that. Same thing with this one. It's already open, but uh, we got Velcro here. One of the things that I'm really like about this tent is this right here. I actually was a little bit worried because every other video I've seen, this was not pre-installed. Uh, people had to install this after opening up the tent for the first time. But for me, like I didn't see it in the box or in the bag or anything. And I was starting to get worried that maybe it wasn't included, but it was just already installed here. So no big deal. Very cool storage pocket here to keep your things kind of secure and safe. And I really like these little pockets for tools and rods and whatever else you got stuck in here. It's got this nice uh, port for a hose, which which I bought from Cabela. So now I can get a little five pound propane tank, take that out with me if I know I'm gonna be in one spot for a long time. Otherwise, if I'm gonna be trying to stay a little bit mobile, probably I'll just stick with the one pounders. But that's just an easier option. Now I don't have to try and feed the tent, uh, feed, the, feed the holes in underneath the tent. But uh, just as a gauge of how much space is in this thing, like let's just have a look here. Oops. Like you walk in, it's quite spacious. I was, I was worried to be honest with you. So my Fraybill tent was 25 square feet. This one's 48 square feet of fishable space. And it's really hard to get a gauge of what that looks like and feels like, especially cause there was no videos talking about just how much room is in this tent. Hopefully this video will help people make a decision if they're looking at buying this so far. I'm very pleased with it. The hub construction up here seems pretty nice, although it seems a bit skewed towards this side. And I think that's probably just because of the door and I'm also on an angle, uh, not really, really something you would experience out on the ice, but I'm in my backyard. Let's go outside, have a look at the outside. So just looking at it from the outside, it looks like a really nice tent from the outside. It looks humongous compared to my old tent. And it's just got this nice otter branding. The colors are nice, it's kind of gray and the black. And I believe that uh, this stuff here, along with the reflectors here, are, are all reflective. Maybe not the wording, but we've got some reflection tape there on all sides of the hubs. So that's a little bit visible in, uh, in the nighttime if you got people on sleds and stuff going around. So Otter also makes a beacon light. And this is the port for the beacon light. It just sticks up there. It's got a little flag and a light and stuff. I don't have one. I actually meant to buy it, but I forgot. But anyways, for the extra tie downs, we've got these nice pockets so that when you're not using them, you can just tuck them away. And they're not flapping in any sort of little wind or anything like that. That's really nice. Something I dealt with on my old tent a lot. Uh, if there was any guy wires here that I wasn't using, they would just be flapping in the wind and making all kinds of racket. Really sucks for filming. Of course, we've got those on all four sides of the hub, even though this is a five sided hub. Obviously the door is the fifth side and uh, there's not going to be a tie down on that, but we've got nice big wide skirting all around, including the door. 
so that's nice. You can pile your snow on there to help keep the heat in. We've got these nice skirt anchors here. And then in addition to the skirt anchors, this is something new. We've got an extra anchor here just to keep it extra safe in super, super windy conditions. There was a day I was fishing last year and even with all six pegs down, I thought my tent was gonna blow away. So hopefully these extra tie downs, the extra anchors will help keep uh, me from feeling like that in really windy conditions. Like I said before, we've got this port here for your, for your heater. If I can get it open with one hand, there you go. You just slip your heater hose in there and then you close this thing. Keeps the, uh, keeps the cold air out with letting the hose in and all that stuff. And yeah, just looks like a really nice tent. What do you think, Abby? Don't pee on it. Now that you've seen it all set up, let's take it down, put it back in the bag, see what that feels like. Obviously it's not as compact as it was when it came out of the box. happy with it like this. Can't wait to get this thing out on the ice. But until then, catch you guys in the next one.